All Amazon sellers want to make more sales. Let's be honest. But how do you actually increase the amount of sales? What things do you have control over? What things do you not have control over? And how can you understand the sales funnel and how to improve it? This is what we're going to be going over in today's video. All right, so this topic or this idea was actually sparked by this particular post. Now, I'm not hating on this post. I think it's really thought provoking. So the question was like, what's better, higher sales or higher conversion rates? Like what helps you rank better? Or what's better for you on the platform? Now, my kind of like contrarian view and comment uh, here was like, if I'm making more sales, why should I care about ranking? Because sales is the ultimate goal. But then it got me thinking because this higher sales or higher conversion rate is kind of a chicken or the egg thing, right? We all know that conversion rates affect sales. So how is it possible to get higher sales even if you have a lower conversion rate? Like what's the equation here? And so what I wanted to explain today and help sellers really understand is this whole sales funnel when it comes to Amazon. Because there's certain touch points or there's certain interactions that shoppers have. And then sometimes something on one end of the funnel, it feels like it's hard to influence. For instance, everyone wants to say, I want to have increases in sales, right? That's why we started this discussion. That's why you're still watching. But how you can influence sales, what parts of the funnel should I tweak? Where am I doing well? Where am I not doing well? Oftentimes that's really difficult to understand. So a lot of sellers will backtrack into ranking or they'll say, hey, I need to run more aggressive ads, which may be the answer, but it honestly may not be the answer. And what I want to sort of caution against is this sort of ultimate throw more ad dollars at this problem because that's how we're going to fix it. Now, ad dollars definitely are going to help with this problem and I'm gonna show you how and also how you might use ad data to sort of get information on some of the sort of what I'm gonna call choke points in the funnel. But that being said, I think it's really helpful if we sort of walk through this funnel because there's some times where if your funnel is working, all you should be doing is throwing more people into the top of it, getting in front of more eyeballs. And that's definitely something that you can use ads to increase. But the entire rest of this funnel is something that is not influenced by ads yet has a very heavy influence as to how many sales you actually get at the end of the day, which in reality, when we're talking about growing Amazon businesses, that's all we really care about. Can I drive more sales? Now, can I drive more sales profitably? That's another conversation. Now, at the end of the day, all we're looking to is drive more sales. Now, can I drive more sales profitably? That's kind of a different conversation. Right now, we're just going to be talking about the sales funnel, the choke points, and how we can drive more sales through data. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to start at the top and I'm going to show you product A and product B. And if you would like access to the spreadsheet to just kind of play around, because this spreadsheet can actually be used as sort of a forecasting tool, if that's how you want to use it. But what I want to do is kind of walk through the different choke points in the funnel and then show you how the top of the funnel as we go down, it sort of influences what happens on this sales level. So you can optimize any part of this funnel and it's going to influence what happens in sales. That being said, let's just go chronologically here. So the first thing that we're going to start off with is impressions or views. Now, when you think impressions, you definitely are thinking ads and running more ads and getting more impressions. And it's definitely something that is important. However, I also want you to think this as views in the search grid. Now, there are some ways that you can sort of get an understanding of this from a total account standpoint using the search query performance. However, a search query only includes views that you get in the search grid. It doesn't include widgets. It doesn't include places that you show up on product pages. It's not going to include like offsite traffic or if you're running sponsored display ads and showing up offsite. It's not going to include anything except just the search. That's why a lot of people get kind of confused because they say, ah, oh, I thought there was more search volume for this particular search term. Yes, that would be the case. But again, search query performance only includes the views that happen inside the regular typical search grids here. But again, think Think of this as the top of the funnel. Think of this as everyone kind of flowing in. These are people who kind of run across your product in their day-to-day -day Amazon shopping searches, right? You could show up in the search grid. You could show up at a product page. Maybe you're running sponsored display ads. You kind of show up on the homepage somewhere. Maybe you're showing up. Again, sponsored display ads can also run offsite. You might be running DSP ads. These are all kind of like the views 
people running across the products, right? And then what I want to do is kind of go through these. So anything that are, these are in blue, these are what I'm calling your choke points or basically the things that you can influence. And the reason why I think this sounds somewhat or is, is somewhat confusing to sellers is a lot of times people say, okay, I want more traffic, meaning I want more clicks on my product, right? I want to drive more orders. I want to drive more sales. These are sort of what's often referred to as like lagging measures or end results of other things happening on behind the scenes. But the thing is that the things that are happening behind the scenes, again, these blue ones, so your click the rate, conversion rate, what your sale price is, and the average units per order, oftentimes those things are calculated using these other metrics. So for instance, our click through rate, we calculate this as our clicks divided by our impressions. So everyone who's seen the product, what percentage of those are actually clicking onto the detail page? So sometimes it can seem like your click-through rate is an end result of your clicks and your impressions, but that's not actually the case. Your click-through rate is what drives or is determining the amount of people who are clicking through once they see your product. And as you can imagine, click-through rate is more easily understood as to how you can influence it. So for instance, if I said, oh, I want to drive more clicks, you know, people might think, oh, increase my bid, get more impressions, which is true. You could increase the amount of people seeing your product. Product, but really when it comes down to it, the way that you get more clicks is by having more people who are viewing the product opt themselves in for a click. And the things that you can optimize here would be things that the shopper is going to see when they run across your product. So think of your shopper interactions, right? You, they see your main images, they see your reviews, so your reviews are so important. They see your price point. They also might see coupons or deals that you have in your product. Most places in the search grid or also in the advertising showcase deals and coupons. So that can be another way to improve your click-through rate, which is I want to entice more people onto my page. Also think about it as in what is the total view of the shoppers. Oftentimes what we do is we narrow ourselves in and say like, oh, my image, my price point, my reviews, and we fail to take a look at the entire shopper experience, meaning what are my competitors doing? What is the context in which I am showing up? This can be really insightful when maybe all of a sudden you see a drop. You might also see it in the conversions as well, but definitely in your click-through rates when you're all of a sudden your competitors, everyone's running coupons and you haven't kept up the market and you're not running coupons. All of a sudden, all of those other products became way more enticing to shoppers and you'll notice your click-through rates may be declining or maybe other sellers, their click-through rates are increasing. And so relative to the market, you've had a decrease. And so that that might be something for you to optimize. So don't only take a look at your product in isolation. You want to take a look at your product relative to the market. Unfortunately, I know we're stuck between a rock and a hard place a lot of times when it comes to profitability. And if our competitors are significantly driving their prices, it definitely becomes a major pain point. So I thoroughly sympathize with this. That being said, when it comes to shoppers, they're not really concerned about your profit margins. Let's be honest. They're concerned about, can I get a deal? So if if all of a sudden all of your competitors have decreased their prices, well, maybe your product is no longer as appealing as it used to be. And I see a lot of sellers with a lot of spreadsheets and say, okay, my margins are this and my so my price point must be this. I completely get it and I completely understand because at the end of the day, yes, we don't really need sales. We need to have net profits available to continuously run our businesses. But that being said, we can't take our eyes off of what the competition is doing and how our products are positioned in the market and how interested shoppers are in our particular products. And that's what our click-through rate is going to tell us. Now, click-through rates aren't super visible in the organic searches. You definitely can see click-through rates a little bit more intently when you look into the ads. So oftentimes ads are a really good place to start when you're trying to get an idea of what your click-through rate looks like. That being said, you can use a search query report to do some calculations and identify a kind of like click-through rates on individual search queries, which you might find helpful as well. Okay, so that was a huge spiel on click-through rates, which again, how many people are viewing? What does our click-through rate look like? will determine the amount of clicks. So I could take this and I can include, so I would have to double my click-through rates, but I would go from a 0.5% click-through rate to a 1% click-through rate. And you can see how my clicks essentially doubled because I doubled my click-through rate. I doubled my clicks. Notice what happens downwind of this, right? All I did was double my click-through rate. I didn't mess with my conversion rates. I didn't 
didn't change my price point. I didn't even change how many units are being sold. But what I essentially did is I doubled my sales. So you can see how that looking at the entire shop off funnel and ultimately being able to optimize this entire sales funnel will help us exponentially increase our sales. Okay, so now we get to clicks, right? People opted themselves in, they're on the detail page. Now we have this additional choke point, which again is something that we can optimize. So how many people are viewing the detail page? Our conversion rate is going to determine how many of these people are actually going to result in an order. So in this case, we can see both of these products have a conversion rate of 10%, but also again, because I'm getting twice as many clicks on product A, you can see how that results into orders. So let's simply put this back. Let's say apples to apples. We want to make everything even. This is going to be a 0.5% click through rate. And you can see that at a 10% conversion rate with 10 people clicking in, both of these are resulting in one order. And again, this is a choke point. This is something that we need to optimize. That's why a lot of people talk about conversion rate. Conversion rate optimization is important. So of course, how you could optimize your conversion rate is definitely going to be all of your listing content. So where are, what are shoppers interacting with? What were they searching for? How appealing is your product? Again, they're also analyzing price point, main image, but now we have them analyzing all of your images, maybe your um, title, which might play into click your click-through rate as well. A plus content, ultimately reviews, trying to go through. But then again, how appealing is your product versus your entire market also is in play here due to all of the other uh, products that can show up on a detail page as well. Um, there are defensive strategies you can run with ads, but ultimately, again, how much does your product deliver on the promise of your main image and what it is that the shopper was searching for? Ultimately, that is going to determine how many people then opt themselves into an order. So in this case, say we improved our conversion rate by 15% on product A. Again, everything remains equal. We can make a 0.5% increase in our the number of orders. So this definitely will improve things for us. And again, you can see how that increases the sales volume at the end of the day. So let's change this back to 10. Again, all things remaining equal. And then we'll go down the funnel as well. Okay, so here is where we get to ultimately how much we are going to make after somebody opts in for an order. Oftentimes people will look at sales volume and they might look at units sold, but really these things determine how much money was made at the end of the day. One of them is our sale price, right? So if we can increase our sales price, providing it's not going to decrease our click-through rate or decrease our conversion rate, which can happen. There are other things in the bottom of the funnel, mainly price point, that can kind of influence what happens at the top of the funnel, meaning like how appealing your product price point is to the market. Uh, that being said, we're just assuming that the product, the, you know, the market is okay with taking a $5 increase here. That is going to result in an increase in our sales, right? We're going to make five more dollars after we drive sales. Now, there are some sellers who will look at their price point and say like, oh, I really, you know, if I could just increase this to $30 and all of a sudden I'm going to be making, you know, 10 more dollars for every single sale, wouldn't that be lovely? Unfortunately, sometimes what that does is this decreases the amount of our conversion rate. So as you can notice, what if we went from a 10 to a six because we increased our sale price? We're actually making less dollars at the end of the day. So you do need to be very cognizant of the potential downwinds of doing things like that. But all things remaining equal, of course, influence during our sale price is going to increase the amount of money we get at the end of the day. But the other thing that is not as talked about is how many units are people purchasing when they opt in for a particular order? So for instance, say we had both of these products at, well, $200 would be a lot more. Say we had a $20 price point for both of these products. But what if for every other person that purchased on product A, we got an additional sale? That actually is also going to influence our amount of sales that we're going to create because for every other person, they purchased two. So there are ways you can do this with like subscribe and save sometimes on variations. You can also like have them move up funnel to purchase the higher price product or you can create incentives for people to purchase multiple products. Doesn't always work out like that, but there are certain times where you can increase the average units per order. If this is something you can optimize, again, it's a little bit more difficult to optimize, but if this is something that you can optimize, your product blends itself well to that, then you can also increase your amount of sales here. So let's go back through and let's see what happens when we go through and we optimize. Okay. So let's do a very tiny increase. Let's see what this is going to look like. And again, you can use this particular spreadsheet 
to create sort of maybe you wanted to do product A or scenario A and scenario B and just kind of see like plug in your numbers as to like how many impressions you're getting and then just kind of tweak these conversion rates and sale price numbers and you can actually see like oh what if I increase my sales price by this what would that look like or if I increase my sales price but my conversion rate dropped a little bit what does that actually end result mean and you might be able to play with a couple different scenarios and then work towards again optimizing one of these choke points but I digress let's say that both of these products are getting 2,000 views right but say on product a we optimized our main image a little bit I'm going to give it a very small bump I'm not even going to go crazy here I'm going to say we went from a 0.5 percent to an 0.8 percent uh, click-through rate that's actually going to result in six more clicks which is quite significant actually if you think about it which again is going to increase the amount of sales that we're making relatively significantly and so say we did this optimization that's super great well maybe we added a small coupon or other discount or something that did bump our conversion rate a little bit again I'm not going to go crazy here I'm going to say hey we bumped our conversion rate from a 10 to a 13 percent or maybe yeah let's do 13 percent as you can see this actually because we're getting more clicks and we haven't increased our conversion rate our order volume has increased significantly which as you can see has significantly increased the amount of sales volume that we're getting well what if we also because we have an increase in the conversion rate and we've definitely gotten like optimized a listing it's looking super fresh and we're noticing our conversion rates increasing we're saying i wonder if the market can take a little bit of a price increase right we're not going to go crazy here let's just add maybe we'll add two dollars i think the market can support two dollars again we see a significant increase in our sales volume providing again that our conversion rate doesn't fall or we don't have issues with the market maybe we have this and then maybe we have like a multiple purchase coupon where maybe our product doesn't lend itself very well to increases but maybe let's say for every couple purchases we make another you know we if somebody orders an additional unit let's go like 0 0.3 here again nothing super crazy but we did influence a little bit you can see all of a sudden end resulting so all we had was same 2000 people are viewing our listing. Same 2,000 people are running across it. So we're probably running the same ads. We're probably showing up on the same places. We probably haven't even increased our rankings at all because again, same amount of people are viewing it. All we've done is optimize our choke points, not even very significantly, but a little bit. And all of a sudden for those same 2,000 impressions or 2,000 views, all of a sudden we went from making $20 to $59 and change with a little bit of tweaks. Now, am I saying that these little bit of tweaks are easy? No, it takes some work and it takes some understanding and it takes some empathy for your target market. But providing you can do that, you can significantly increase your amount of sales that you're getting. So again, this is how the whole funnel works together. And then once you have an optimized funnel and you are, you know, you're really honed in, then again, you can increase your views and impressions with ads. So what if we took this funnel and it wouldn't be too difficult to get an extra thousand impressions but again let's not go crazy let's say hey let's just get an extra 500 impressions in this funnel we're going to increase our ads all of a sudden this funnel completely blows up because we have significantly optimized again we're only sending 500 more people through this funnel we haven't even doubled it we haven't even tripled it which again is doable with ads given your target market and given your profit margins and what you can afford in ad spend but we are in a very good position to put our foot on the gas because our entire funnel has has been optimized. So I really hope that you found this helpful. I really hope that helped kind of open your eyes to the different interactions and how things works and also the choke points and steps that you can actually optimize when it comes to your selling your product on Amazon to really help influence that sales increase because oftentimes they'll be like this, I need more sales black box and it feels like what are the action steps? What are the points? What are the things that I can help to influence? What are the moves I can make to really help me increase my sales. So if you would like a copy of this spreadsheet, there will be a link to a form down below, plug in your email address, we'll send it to you right away. You can get this, you can start playing with it. And again, you could also feel free to use this as sort of a forecasting tool that you could then sort of say, if I increased my click-through rates, if I increased my conversion rates, if I played around with my sale price, what does that ultimately translate to when it comes to increasing my sales?